Come all you people, come and praise your Maker. Come all you people, come and praise your Maker. Come all you people, come and praise your Maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise your Maker. Come all you people, come and praise your Maker. Come all you people, come praise your Maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come praise your Maker. Come all you the Lord. Come on, all you people. Come, all you people. Come and praise your Maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your Maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your Maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come on, all you people. Come, all you people. Come and praise your Maker. Come all you people, come praise your maker. Come all you people, come praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. 5 a.m. in the Pine Woods. I'd seen their hoof prints in the deep needles and knew they ended the long night under the pines, walking like two mute and beautiful women toward the deeper woods. So I got up in the dark and went there. They came slowly down the hill and looked at me, sitting under the blue trees. Shyly, they stepped closer and stared from under their thick lashes and even nibbled some damp tassels of wood. This is not a poem about a dream, though it could be. This is a poem about the world that is ours, or could be. Finally, one of them, I swear it, would have come to my arms, but the other stamped sharp hoof in the pine needles like the tap of sanity. And they went off together through the trees. When I woke, I was alone. I was thinking, so this is how you swim inward. So this is how you flow outward. So this is how you pray. Did you go there to the woods? Were you there watching still this miracle of presence? A surprise? These two wild things willing to stand for a moment and look you in the eye? Sometimes passion is loud and wild and sometimes it's quiet and intense, like that moment for Mary Oliver. This is how you swim inward. This is how you flow outward. Welcome to another gathering of Sacred Journey, where we strive every week to be centered to be open, to be receptive, to be engaged. And I invite you now to engage your whole body and voice as we sing this song and flow out together. Stand as you're able. Two, three, and... Life 
flows on So as we continue this pattern of swimming inward and flowing outward, I invite you to settle into your seat and feel the weight of the chair supporting you. Feel your feet on the floor. If you can, experience your heartbeat. Feel your breath moving in and out. Come to know, awaken to the presence of God within you, surrounding you, to the east, the west, the north, the south, within us, above us, below us. Holy One, you are sheer being itself. You are spirit. Awaken us to your presence within us and here in this circle. Gather us as one, as your people. Mold us in this time into a community. Shape and form us into a family. Give us eyes to see you in each other, in the face of each person here. Your face reflected back to each of us in the eyes of each one that we see. One face visible in every face, your face. One source embodied in each face, embodied in infinite forms, in every form. One love expressed in each one of us and in every being on this sacred planet. In this worship hour, open our eyes. May we awaken. May we truly see. And in gratitude, in thanksgiving, may we sing our love dance our joy, and taste your spirit's flavor. So that is one rhythm of worship. And here is another. I invite you to get your hands free 
and join me as we do a little hand beatbox together. All right. The Psalms are our oldest songs in scripture. They cover the waterfront of emotions and expression. This one is pretty exuberant. I'm warning you now in advance. All you have to do is listen to what I say and say it back. Sing to the Lord all the earth, alleluia. Sing to the Lord all the earth, alleluia. Worship the Lord with joy, hooray. Worship the Lord with joy, hooray. Come before God with happy songs, ta da 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 Come to God with happy songs, ta da We'll never forget that you are God. You'll never forget that you are God. You're the one who made us, we belong to you. You're the one who made us, we belong to you. We are your people, hey, we are your flock, ho! We are your people, hey, we are your flock, ho! We enter your temple gates with thanksgiving. We enter your temple with th thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise, zippity doo -da. We enter your courts with praise, zippity doo -da. We give you thanks and praise you. We give you thanks and praise you. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because God's love is eternal. Because God's love is eternal. And the flavor lasts forever. Mm. And the flavor lasts forever. Mm. Amen. We have two readings this morning. The first is from the book of John, chapter 4, verses 23 to 26. The time is coming. It has, in fact, come. When what you're called to do will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. It is who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people God is looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before God in their worship. God is sheer being itself. It is the spirit. Those who worship God must do it out of their very being, in their very spirits, their true selves, in adoration. And the woman said, I don't know about that, but what I do know is that the Messiah is coming, and when he arrives, we'll get the whole story. I am he, said Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. And the second reading is from the book of Samuel, chapter 6, verses 14 through 16. David was dancing for God with all of his might, but he only wore a linen cloth. He and everyone else were celebrating by shouting and blowing horns while the chest was being carried along. Saul's daughter, Micah, looked out of her window and watched the chest being brought into David's city. But when she saw David jumping and dancing for God, she was disgusted. Those are the word of God for the people of God. And each one of you is indeed a word of God for the people of God. In that spirit, I invite you to stand and greet one another with words of welcome and peace.
The tempest round me roar. I hear the truth in living. I know the darkness round me comes. Songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to Love is Lord of heaven, 
Oh, you're kidding. That's okay. Do you need a cable? I have a cable. It would have to be on a different computer. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. It's you too. David danced, and he 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 danced, and then David danced, and he danced, and he danced. He danced so hard, he danced himself out of his clothes. He danced so hard, he danced himself into a spunky sweat. He danced so hard that he danced his wife embarrassed. <laughs> Cheryl doesn't know it, but she played right into my hands. Thank you, Cheryl, because she just said to me, I had a really interesting time saying the word loincloth. <laughs> and disgusted. Paint this picture in your mind of a man, a king, to be stripped down to his tidy whities <laughs> stripped down to his tidy whities and there's no telling if they were briefs or boxers <laughs> in fact scripture says it was a loin cloth which was probably a strip of cloth about this wide that he used to just Pull it all up and tie it together. <laughs> sort of like my scarf, but not as pretty. <laughs> and out in the middle of the streets, following the Ark of the Covenant, the holiest relic that the people of God had ever possessed, here was this madman dancing in nothing except a strip of cloth so hard and so fast and so furious that when his wife looked out the window, she thought, oh my God. I knew he was crazy, but really, really, could you not have some decorum about yourself? Could you not conduct yourself with some respect of protocol? After all, remember David's first wife, Michael, was the daughter of, come on, Saul. She's Saul's daughter. She's a princess, accustomed to all of the life and beautiful ways of being in a king's court. Never mind that Saul didn't have such a great ending himself. Remember, Saul went mad and ended up doing things that weren't exactly key to protocol. But Saul had never done anything like public dancing in the street. And the scripture is very discreet. It leaves lots of space and lots of room for us to imagine what that must have been like. 
just think, all of you in here who've been married over <clears throat> a few years, if you had seen your husband stripped down to his underpants in the middle of your neighborhood following a chest about the size of the table and dancing. <laughs> dancing. Because this is not a waltz. This is not a three-step. <laughs> this is not a foxtrot. This is not even a tango. This is tribal dancing at its most primitive. This is dancing at its most powerful. This is not just dancing for entertainment. This is dancing to arouse the passion and favor of God, to celebrate and embrace the fact that the Ark of the Covenant, which had been taken away and which had been stolen, was being returned to its rightful owners and being returned to its rightful place. And David, in his exuberance, David, in his desire to be completely naked before the Lord, couldn't contain himself. I sometimes think that in his head he had the soundtrack of Sly and the Family Stone. <laughs> you know, that somewhere he was going, dance to the music! Dance to the music. Somewhere in his mind, he had a bass track playing, and he had a zither going, and he had horns blowing, and he was saying, yes, yes, yes. Because one of the things we know about David is that he loved God with all his heart and all his passion. And even though he did some really odd things that maybe were not such great decisions, David is described as being a man after God's own heart. So what does that tell you about God's passion for us? David, dancing, wildly, publicly, displaying his affection and passionate worship for God in response to what God had placed in his heart, that desire to know and be known, that desire to love and be loved, that desire to show and return as much affection and passion as he felt he'd been given. You and I are called to be like David. We may or may not have Sly and the Family Stone playing in the soundtrack of our mind. We may have Duke Ellington playing in the soundtrack of our mind. We may have Dean Martin playing in the soundtrack of our mind. But we are called to be people of passionate worship because our God is a passionate God. That's part of the beauty of the Israelite God. That's part of the beauty of our witness to the world is that this is not a God who is standing apart from creation, looking at it and saying, I hope they get it right. Mm. What time is tea? <laughs> this is a God that is willing to invest completely and fully and passionately in the creative experience and a God who loved us enough and loves us still enough to say, come on, come on. Don't just sit there. Life's great. Get involved. Get in there. Dance. Don't just dance like no one's looking. Dance like you don't care if they see you. One of the things that 
Stanley Harawas, who is a professor of ethics, retired now from Duke, says is that the greatest difficulty we have in the world at the moment with the church is that the church doesn't know what it's supposed to do, and so it keeps trying to do other things. And he says that the church's job is to be the church so the world knows it's the world. Now, he's not talking about in an institutional sense. What he's saying is that those of us who are called and who've accepted the invitation to be in the ecclesia, the called out ones in response to God's passionate love, are called to live it out so fully that everyone who sees us says, I want to be like them. I want to do what they do. I want to love like they love. I want to live like they live. Whatever they're having, I'll take some of that. It's almost like the scene from when Harry met Sally and they're in the restaurant and <laughs> Meg Ryan... Meg Ryan does this wonderful imitation of passion and the woman sitting at the table says, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> Friends, in a few moments we're going to come to a table that's open to everyone. We're going to come to a table where there are really simple things, gluten-free simple things, because some of us need them, but simple things. And to the untrained eye and the uninitiated heart, they don't look like much. It doesn't look like much to come to a table with a loaf of bread picked up from Lunds and some crackers and some grape juice. But if the spirit that enlivened David's heart and initiated his desire to dance is still that same spirit that created you and I and calls us into community, then what we receive at this table is more than just little stuff, simple stuff. What we receive at this table are the very substantive elements that cause us to be able to dance like we don't care anyone's watching in the midst of all of our despair and our distress and our difficulties and our ups and our downs from week to week and day to day because we know that the dance is inviting us to real life. Marva Don says worship is irrelevant. It's a royal waste of time. And that's true in many ways. There's nothing productive about this. If you're an efficiency expert, if you're a time management person, there is nothing that you can do to codify and say that it's worth it to come and spend an hour singing songs, clapping your hands, snapping your fingers, and then coming and picking up a cracker and dipping it in some juice. It doesn't fit into any sort of efficiency scheme that you could ever imagine. But the timeless power of what we do and what we receive takes us beyond the hours and the days and the minutes and the seconds into that amazing space that's called Kairos, God time, where there is no beginning, where there is no end where there is a continuous invitation and cycle to joy. I'm always excited by the fact that the best word I ever learned in seminary is the word I carry with me from day to day, and it's perichoresis. It's not an infection, I promise. <laughs> but I hope it's infectious. Perichoresis is the little theological word for the invitation to dance with the divine. 
Perichoresis says that somehow in a mystery we don't understand, God <laughs> said, let us make humanity in our own image. And God was perfectly happy dancing. God was perfectly fine. But there was so much love and so much joy in the dance that it spilled over and God said, I need a creature who can dance like I can dance. And so God said, I want you to come and dance with me. <laughs> and that's perichoresis. <laughs> that through all of eternity, you and I, together, around the table, are invited to dance and dance and dance and dance. And dance and dance and dance. Our life flows on in an endless invitation to the passionate dance and love of God. Amen. Our life does indeed flow on as we dance outward. Let us swim inward again for a moment and reconnect with that timeless power, that endless power of holy love. I invite you in this time to be in a spirit of prayer, to offer your prayers to the Holy One. And for those of you who have prayers that you'd like to say aloud so that we all can hear them, I invite you to raise your hand. We'll pass the microphone around, and I invite you to say your first name and offer your prayer. So let us pray. I'm Lorelei, and I'm very grateful for... Um, <laughs> very grateful for um, that I have I was scheduled to have surgery and when the doctor examined me she said I don't need it I'm very grateful for that as a community let's gather that prayer into our heart hold it there for a moment bless it with our love and then send it on its way to God Um, a few weeks ago, I became involved with a young Native girl, and I did help her out. However, she has called me numerous times since then, and I've had to say no, both for her good and mine. Um, I did contact her tribe and got in touch with her um, worker. She's under child protection, and I let them know her. We, I don't know where she was staying, but I gave them her current phone number. But I feel both good and bad about saying no when she ran away and came back to the cities, and I said, no, I can't help you anymore. I was afraid I'd be sucked under. I'm Lee. Uh, good news, bad news. The Eritrean family that we have been helping uh, five of the six members of the family received their green cards. Adhanat, the mother, did not receive hers because there was an error in the application 
so it had to be sent back. I am extremely concerned because of new policy of the Trump administration that is slowing down and uh, turning down green card applications. So I pray that her green card goes through without a problem. I'd like to pray for my brother, Martin, who had a stroke about 10 days ago. I was the one who witnessed the stroke, and my husband called 911, and he was taken to the hospital in the ambulance. I hope that he recovers as much as he possibly can. He's still in intensive care, but doing pretty good. Um, as uh, I announced a couple of weeks ago that um, um, I'm a freshman at the University of Minnesota. Um, and so two weeks ago I took my first class and like a rookie I end up there at 9 o'clock for a 9.45 class. So no one's in the room obviously, they're still sleeping. Um, <laughs> but I'm there and then a young woman walks in, an 18-year-old, about 9.25, and she looks at me, and I look at her, and I say, are you a freshman? And she said, yes, and I said, hey, so am I. <laughs> she was stunned. But anyhow, as I walked around the campus and saw the thousands of young people, and I thought, my goodness, here they are, starting their lives, endeavoring to find out what they want to do, uh, I just saw just so much thrilling potential. So I'd like to offer a prayer to all of those young people throughout this country and the world who are endeavoring to discover their path in life. And we pray that they find it and find a way that they can contribute. I lift a prayer for the thousands in the Carolinas who have had their life affected for years to come, and some of whom had not even recovered from the storm of two years ago. They need our care and our attention, and may we do much better than we did in Puerto Rico. Our friend Ann Ness has asked for strength for her and for confidence in the future. Uh, I want a prayer uh, because I departed my wife five years ago and we have some uh, issues, disagreements, I need prayer on that and I also have some uh, housing issues. Uh, let God interfere. I'm Steve. Um, I want to pray for all the emergency responders, we see them front and center when the news includes disasters like Florence. But I'm also aware, as anyone who has visited an emergency room is aware, of the day-to-day -day work of people who see a stream of folks who have emergencies big and small all the time. So there's a whole cadre of emergency people all over the country who are working 24-7 to respond and come to our aid, and I pray in gratitude for them.
I'd like to offer a prayer for Debbie's safe travel back from Nantucket. She's traveling today. Thank you, Steve. My son is a firefighter in California. I appreciate your thoughts. But as I go through my week of rather mundane things, I forget to look for the extraordinary that's available to do. I have a prayer of gratitude for everyone who finds out that the infection in their body is not MRSA. And I especially have a prayer of intercession that science will find a way, that there will be a way found to cure and help and bring back the folks who do have MRSA, and they will become totally whole in whatever way that God wants them to be, and that they will be healed. I'm Carolyn, and I've been watching that tent city, little tent city, um, it's on 55, increase and increase and increase over the weeks. And just thinking of, of those mainly Native peoples who have found some sort of comfort by living together there in these tents instead of on the streets. And I just want to pray for these people. They are supposed to, they're, the city is planning to relocate them. Um, I hope that they find this kind of community where they are relocated that they have found there, although I know there are many, many serious questions about the situation right now. I'm Holly, and thanks to the pastor for giving such a nice service. Goodbye. And as one voice, let us pray together. Spirit of love and source of life, the mercy that heals our wounds reminds us that we can be gentle with others who are struggling. The peace that guards our souls reminds us that we can show love to all who have only known indifference. The joy that warms our hearts reminds us that we can rejoice in the love that lives beyond our seasons of sadness. Help us to hold and share these gifts of love in community so everyone we meet will know the warmth and wonder of worship. Amen. Just before we begin and share communion, I want to draw your attention as if we could look away from the amazingly beautiful um, cloth which decorates our table this morning. It is a, an offering of love to God and to us from our own friend Janet Pollock. And Janet, I'm going to ask you to come forward and tell us just a bit about the cloth. We are so blessed in the many ways that we can com to contribute to both Sacred Journey and Hennepin. And um, since Joe and I have been back from China, that has come in spades. And so one, uh, several months ago, I said to Sally, you know, I have this idea about 
this altar cloth, would that be okay? And she said, go for it. So um, it, it came to me more out of um, pragmatism, really, than beauty, um, because the people that create our, our altar for us every Sunday, I am just an inspire of them. Not just one Sunday, but Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And I said to myself, couldn't we come up with something that we could use as a backup plan? And so that's where it came from. Um, Carol and, um, and Marcia said, I said, is there some leftover fabric somewhere? And I was so surprised because there's a whole closet. Um, <laughs> like, there's this closet. You should see it. It's amazing. And so all of the fabric from um, the cloth is from our Sacred C Journey community over the many, many years. And I had the wonderful opportunity to put it together. It was inspired by the five liturgical colors. And so it's meant to be our used when we need to, when we want to, and when we're not inspired. <laughs> so enjoy. can't imagine that Sacred Journey worshipers would ever be not inspired. <laughs> <laughs> the table is open to all because the invitation of God is for all. The invitation is for all because grace is for all. And the grace is for all because all have a place and a space and a role in the community of God. The table is open for all. Let us pray. Timeless designer of time and place and space, in this tiny fragment of earth, you have gathered us and chosen this sacred moment on this day to fill our minds and touch our spirits with your presence. We are here because sometimes we forget that we are not alone. And so we thank you for this time of remembering and recreation when we affirm the mystery that holds us. All things live because you said it should be so. Through Jesus, you stood with us, ate with us, wept with us, wept for us, and offered life to us. And so we thank you for offering now the spirit of transformation and preparation that reminds us that we are not alone. We are indeed one in this memory and in this meal. Amen. Simple things can mean a lot. In this case, these simple things are everything for us because they are God's meal prepared for the people of God. So, the servers will come. The servers, we will have two stations in the back, gluten-free in the center. As Jesus did with his friends, we give thanks over the bread and receive this gift of creation, hearing the echo, remember me. We give thanks over the cup, hearing the echo, remember me.
we place upon your table a gleaming cloth of wine, the weaving of our story.
Shall we pray? Source of love and life, we thank you for this meal and we ask that it might nourish us so that we would be passionate, purposeful worshipers who love you in return. Amen. And so now, shall we celebrate your good news? Some of you are here this morning to let us know that your birthday is just around the corner or has just happened or you've had an anniversary of some kind or a new beginning or an ending, an important event in your life. Good news that you want us to know about and we will celebrate. I invite you to come forward so we can hear your good news and offer our blessing. One of the things I love about this community is the uh, love and reverence that so many people have for nature and birds. And so I hope over the next few months and years I'll be able to join the ranks of people like Steve and Kathy and Lee and Tom and Jeff and Art and Bob Jansen who's not here, yeah. Um, because on Friday I started working at Wild Bird Food Store in Hopkins Crossroad, Minnetonka, so I have to know more than you know in, <laughs> in order to serve well. Uh, I celebrated a birthday this week. And I have one next week. Uh, I'm here to say thank you to Mark and Susan. Sarah's parents were with us all weekend. It was lovely. So very happy to be here, that they're here with us today. Well, because my family thought this was a, a real milestone moment, they hired a bagpiper to come for my 80th birthday. Oh. Aye, that's a frightening thought. <laughs> so in, in, uh, let's extend our, our hands, open our hearts, and offer our blessing. God grant you many years. There are many ways to be involved in the life and the work of the community. This week, this Friday evening, September 21, is the annual Dignity Center fundraiser to be held this year at Westminster Presbyterian Church. The provocative theme is, I've come up from down. I like it. Featuring some members of the Steele family. Also, there's a, a, an event this afternoon, a, a sing, Singing in the Light, at 4 o'clock in this room, just to come and sing for the joy of singing. So you're all invited to that. Other announcements? Go. I got one. Okay, I have a concert coming up this Thursday, September 20th. It's at uh, the Dunsmore Room, which is at Pruners. Some of you have been to that venue to see my trio perform. I'll be there on the 20th at 7.30. That's Thursday. Um, and I know that some of you are already have planned to attend. Danny. I'm Danny Smith, and I'm still trying to do housekeeping, administrative housekeeping, and Madison's um, email list that I have, and phone list we have, is listed as connected. One of the things I'm noticing is I don't see some of you on that list, and I would love to include you in the special email that we sent just to Sacred Journey for not only just um, opportunities to serve, but just information. So if you would see me, I can add Judy. I want to let you know that in just a few weeks we're going to have a, a golf forum here at 1115 with the Reverend Judith Banya, who is the pastor of Bywala United Methodist Church. And Judith is here with us this morning. So please welcome her. Yeah. Yeah. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Others? Uh, Dennis. Sharing is caring. All right, I invite all of you who are able to stand and let's sing our way out into God's world this week with this final verse of this beloved song. And all God's people together said, Amen. Amen. Ah, women. Ah, children. Ah, animals. Ah, creation. Ah.